Hi friends, Simit here from InformTrades.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about the price to sales ratio, what that is and how investors can use it to identify undervalued stocks. Let's get started. Okay, key points. We'll start by defining the price sales ratio. Then we'll take a look at some strategies for using it, as well as its relationship to the price earnings ratio, which is probably a more common ratio, but the two are, are fairly closely related conceptually and, um, and mathematically. And then we'll take a look at some sample usages with a screener, how you can actually apply the price sales ratio to identify stocks that you might be interested in investing in. Okay, let's get started. Price sales ratio defined. Um, that is basically a real simple calculation. It's market capitalization divided by the trailing 12 months of sales. So basically you're taking market capitalization, which is the price of buying up all the common shares, uh, the entire what it costs, or approximately what it costs to buy the entire company, divided by the past sales or the sales for the past year. So it's essentially what are you paying for for each dollar in sales? That's sort of what the ratio is uh, is attempted to calculate. And price earnings is sort of a more refined version. So market capitalization over, or price earnings is market capitalization over the earnings, over sales minus the operating costs. Whereas price sales is just a broader, let's see how, how much you're paying for the sales of the company. Advantages of price sales. Okay, so one, it's harder to manipulate than earnings. One of the reasons why investors like price sales relative or instead of uh, price earnings or perhaps in conjunction with price earnings is that earnings can be, it's a more complex calculation. Depending on how you calculate revenue and how you calculate your expenses, it can be manipulated in a way. It can be used to create a different financial picture than what may be the actual underlying reality. So a lot of investors will argue that sales is a harder number to manipulate because it's so simple. And for that reason, it's more meaningful, it's more accurate. Another key component is that it's less volatile than earnings. So for instance, if a company that spends a lot on future plans for growth, you know, let's say a company, for instance, has uh, a very successful year. However, they've been reinvested a lot of their earnings into future growth, into you know building a plant or a new factory or whatever it may be. That may make it look like their earnings are very small, and you may see their earnings go up and down a lot. However, their sales may still be climbing, so it may not be indicative of weakness in the company. Um, and for that reason, a lot of investors like to see sales rise. And they may say to themselves, well, earnings went down because of one-time expense or because they're investing in, in something for growth. But the sales are still growing, so the company is still strong. You can see that a bit in, in this chart here, the first chart here where, uh, where I'm hovering over now. It's, uh, the purple line is price sales, and the green line is price earnings. And you see price earnings had a huge spike up. In right before the crash in in 2008, price er, price sales also had a big move at that time. However, in general, the line's been a bit more stable. There's been less volatility there, and you can also see that with price sales and price earnings, there still is a concept of mean reversion. So this is one of the ways that a lot of investors use it, and a lot of investors use price ratios. <coughs> excuse me. Use price ratios with the concept of mean reversion, meaning when it gets too high, that's when you want to sell. That's when things are overvalued. And when it's the price sales ratio or price earnings or price cash flow is low, that's the time to buy. And that concept is playing out in the price to sales ratio. You can sort of see that in the bottom chart here. You know, If you sold on December 29th in 1961, price sales ratio at a high, that probably would have been a good idea. If you bought Jan uh, July 26th, 1982, price sales ratio reaches a, a low, you know, below 0.6, it's a good time to buy. And that's sort of, you know, one standard deviation, the mean here, you know, at 0.6, if price sales is at 0.6 on the S&P 500, that's probably a good time to buy the index. If it's at 1.42, it's probably a good time to sell. You know, it's not perfect. You can see there's some big moves outside of that range, uh, but it can be useful. And a lot of these, you know, valuation indicators, price sales, price earnings, you know, it's useful when combined with another tool. One investor, Ken Fisher, likes to combine price sales with price earnings, uh, also with debt to cash, seeing EPS growth. So a lot of these ratios can give a clear idea of how the company is, is operating. 
But here are the key advantages. You know, it's harder to manipulate than earnings. It's less volatile than earnings. And the mean reversion concept that's a part of all valuation ratios uh, is still applicable here as well. At least that's what the, the back-tested data suggests. And speaking of back-testing, uh, FatPitchFinancials.com conducted a test. This goes back to only the year 2000. So we're looking at a 13-year period. You may say that's not valid. You may find that acceptable. But something to consider, I definitely want to mention that. We'll have a link to Fat Pitch Financials over on informtrades.com in our article on the price-sales ratio. You can see the whole study there. But basically, if you look at stocks, well, the first thing they did was they eliminate a whole bunch of criteria. So they want to see stocks with a market cap of at least 50 million. They want to see average daily volume of at least 100,000 shares. No TC stocks, no ADR stocks. So basically stocks that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ in the U.S. Price is $1 per share at least, and they remove the entire financial services sector. So they were left with about 3,300 stocks. From that, they take the lowest 20% of price to sales um, ratio. And there you saw a significant outperformance. The blue line is the S&P 500. Here is the lowest 20% of price to sales. So, and they redid this every year. So at the start of the year, they'd find the lowest price to sales. Each year, next year, they'd recalculate. Uh, and you can see the lowest 20% really outperforms. And something interesting, another strategy is if you go long the lowest 20% and short the bottom quintile, the highest 20% of price sales ratio, where you're paying the most for a dollar of sales and stocks that by that metric are overvalued, those, those stocks underperformed the S&P 500 and were actually negative. So you could, by doing that spread, you know, buying the lowest 20% and selling the highest 20% of price sales ratio, you can get even more, uh, better returns. Uh, but that was an interesting back test, I thought, and something worth uh, mentioning, something that lends credence, credence excuse me, to this concept. Of course, the two biggest proponents that I've come across that like the price to sales ratio or Ken Fisher and James O'Shaughnessy. Both of them have done a lot of research. We've talked about uh, O'Shaughnessy in one of our other videos. Um, and they like to combine price-to-sales ratio with other metrics. So a lot of this is experimenting, seeing what works for you. But there may be some truth here, as we discussed, and largely for sort of the reasons that we're mentioning here. It's harder to manipulate, less volatile, mean reversion. Okay, let's take a look at using this with a screener. A Guru Focus is a screener I've been using, I feel. It's the best screener out there, uh, at least in my opinion. There's other uh, opinions. So we'll take a look at another screener. Um, you know, it is a premium screener, which is definitely a, a comes with a cost, whether that cost is worth it for you. But here it's real simple. You know, price to, uh, price to sales, medium, well, price to median sales there. But price to sales here, you know, you can start with, Let's see, I want to see price to sales below 1, for instance. Um, and, of course, with this, uh, with Guru Screener, you can also bottom 50, you know, bottom 100. You can sort by the highest ones or the, by their relative position to other stocks. You can also combine it with other indicators, for instance, fundamental data here. You know, so filter out certain industries. You want market cap of at least 50 million. You can re recreate the the uh, the study that was done on Fat Pitch Financials. You know, you can say cash to debt uh, should be at least 0.5, or actually, let's say it should be oh yeah, let's, let's say it should be at least two. You want twice as much cash to debt. And here's something you have right here. So you can sort of, and you can sort of, you know, plug it into Excel, do more. You can sort of get an idea. Uh, that's sort of how Guru, um, Guru Focus works. They also have their own pick. So low price to sales, you know, and you can see here are the stocks that they like based on the price to sales ratio. So this is something that also may be of, uh, of interest to you. Uh, Finviz also has this screener, and there's a lot more you can do. Just one other thing I want to mention before we go to to Finviz. Um, you can you know you can focus it on price change, combine a bunch of other things, valuation rank, you know price of sales based on a percentile. So there's a lot of ways you can sort of add you know 
based on historical price to sales ratio. There's a lot of ways you can sort of, you know, growth. Price sales is largely considered a growth metric, so you want to see, all right, price sales ratio below one, and they have a five-year growth rate of at least, you know, 10% in sales, revenue growth. So you can sort of add in a bunch of criteria there. Finviz has not as many criteria, but still has a lot of criteria. And this was a stock screener mentioned uh, by one of our members on Inform Trades, which I thought was definitely worth mentioning in this video here. You, know, you can sort by uh, price to sales ratio, you know, under under one, let's say, for instance. Oh, ad comes up. Um, and you can also do sales growth for the past five years, you know, over ten percent. So you can sort of start to see some some uh, some stocks there. So it doesn't have quite as many filters as Guru Focus. And like I mentioned, Guru Focus is a really detailed one, but this is free, so there's definitely that to be said. So a lot of it depends on what you're going for, how much capital you have, of course, uh, and what your strategy is really all about. Uh, and that's about it. Any questions you have on the price-sales ratio, anything you want to add, join us at informedtrades.com. Best of luck in your trading, and we'll see you next time. Take care.